2 Timothy 2.15, so that you'll have some shoelace on the proof. Amen? Amen. Praise God for that. And uh, likewise, that was from Lucy and from Lex. He also gave me several verses. One of my favorite, for God so loved the world. Amen? Amen. And uh, give us an Old Testament, Genesis 42.1. Amen? Amen? Isn't that great? Amen. What's the X about? Okay. Amen. There's nothing that can make me happier, and I mean that sincerely, to see our young people uh, partaking in the Word of God like they are. Amen. And so hopefully God has done something for you this week. Amen. You got some more? Okay, still doing something. Praise the Lord. Anybody else tonight have anything going on? Yes, Lucy. Um, we were talking about the on the record. Amen. Traveling down to, uh, oh, amen, isn't that great? Did you have a good time? Brother James. I'd like to thank the Lord for being, allowed, being able to come up here this week and be with the family, friends, and our church. Amen. amen. <laughs> yes, Miss Ruby. I'd like to thank the Lord for my salvation and also, um, So you're not having problems with getting married, are you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're going to talk to you about it. I couldn't help <laughs> uh, Anybody else? <laughs> oh, no. Yes, my sister-in-law. Yes, I want to thank God that um, the trip went well. I came back in trial, so I can more people. <laughs> and that um, family stayed happy with each other. And the Amen. Did you, uh, was the hand of God. Did you get to swim with the dolphins? <coughs> Lord, did you swim with the dolphins? Yes, I did. Is that a swim with the dolphins? Is that a test? Oh, okay. Oh, that's a fish. Oh, or a mammal. <laughs> anyway, we're glad that you're safe and back home. Praise the Lord. Anybody else tonight? Oh, yes, Steve. Let's see my hand. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> expensive for him to fly back and forth all the time. And that's so if you ever feel led to uh, throw some money his way to help him out, I know he wouldn't like that, but I figured I'd say that tonight. Yeah. Amen? It's expensive. Brother James. The Navy actually paid for this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. <laughs> He's fine. <signed. laughs> <laughs> you can see all that gill over there. 
Brother Lex. <laughs>
that. Amen. And we're going to have Brother Stephen pray for us tonight. Thank you.
Amen. Amen. Might return before you get married. Amen. 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 That'd be all right. Amen. Wouldn't it? So we need to have a word of prayer tonight. And uh, we're going to start off with the idea of something that was written for us to read the trail of blood other than the word of God. Uh -huh. Amen. And I'm going to have uh, Brother Chris. So good to see you tonight, brother. And pray for us, would you? Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for allowing us to come to your house here. We thank you for the many blessings you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the protection you give us, Lord. We thank you for the salvation that you've given us, Lord. Yes, Lord. We ask that you be our pastor tonight and strengthen him and give him the words that you give us in our Christian world. Um, we ask that everyone here is blessed by that. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 If we look at our history, we can go back and find out that we are truly ancient Baptists. Yes. That is Amen. We're going to stick to that. Now, we are, uh, we are Charity Independent Baptist Church. Amen. Right. And uh, we are a Baptist church. Amen. And right. praise God for that. So the uh, trail of blood is an interesting subject tonight because we're going to look at that a little bit as we Amen. go through these notes. But we need to consider ourselves ancient Baptists. Right. Now, what do I mean by that? We have a heritage right. that we can look back on. My description, if I will, or if you will listen tonight, as we are not interested in the modern liberal, socialistic, or political correct denominational Baptists. There's a lot of them out there. Yep. There's a lot of ideology out there today. And so who do you believe? Uh, God. Amen. Amen. So God is behind the ancient Baptists, whether yes, we like to believe that or not. Exactly. We're going to learn that as time goes on. So we want, at least I want to be an ancient Baptist. Amen. Amen. And uh, we want to be where they were, yes. and we want to be able to be, uh, I guess we can't be equal to sit up here on their level, but we certainly can have some of their, if you will, precepts and, and out of the Word of God. Amen. And we can, we can go forward. Right. And we can stand on that. Amen. Amen. And it's difficult. Even talking with my son, there's so much stuff that's going on out there today oh, yeah. that uh, it almost seems like we got to start a battle in order to win, but we don't need to. Nope. Right. All we have to do is believe what the Bible says Amen. Amen. and stand on the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, our next thought would be, Bible-believing Baptists, and I shared this with you, I think, last week, Bible-believing Baptists have a dual heritage. Mm -hmm. uh, we are fundamental yep. and Baptists. Sure. So we can tie those two words together and say who we are and focus back on our heritage. Amen. What does it mean to be fundamental? Anybody? To believe in the fundamentals of the gospel. Amen. Not so man, right. but the word of God. Amen. Yes. And uh, we can go way back to the time of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago and uh, look at what the Bible tells us about how the church was established. Right. And it was established by Jesus Christ. Amen. So our fundamental heritage reaches way back, well, about 100 years. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that to my son. Sure. The time that we had revivals. Right. The time when people are truly getting saved. Yes. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about, um, what's the one famous evangelist in sight? Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Oh, thank you. Uh, Billy Graham, uh, a lot of people got saved. Sure. And um, I believe they did. And I believe there were great evangelists prior to Billy Graham. Oh, yes. Right. But nowadays, uh, we don't have that anymore. Nope. Isn't that kind of weird? Yeah. What's happened to the old time preacher? We, we had a tent meeting here a couple of years ago, three years. How long ago was that, Chris? Three years ago. Three years ago? Yeah. And that's when Chris got saved. Yeah. He got saved by the preaching of the Word of God. Not Amen. getting saved because somebody laid out uh, one, two, three, four. Right. Uh, and then he said, I'll, I'll follow those steps and get saved. Right. The gospel was preached on him and he couldn't help it. Amen. Uh, all I did was show him the Word of God, how he can know for sure that he's saved. Amen. Right. And so I've watched Chris grow. How many watch Chris grow? Amen. Amen. Chris grow. Chris go. <laughs> But anyway, we've watched Chris grow over the years. Sure. Amen? And it's not because of me. It's not because of his wonderful wife. It's because Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ that lives inside of him. Amen? So, we're going to go back and uh, touch on a couple of thoughts tonight so we don't forget. The Bible, that is the King James Bible, I should have wrote that up there, is our sole authority. Amen. So even though so many versions have uh, scripture in it, uh, you can get saved by the Word of God. Right. And there's commentaries that have scripture in it. And in those 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 scriptures are the King James Bible, guess what? You can get saved. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. By the power of God. So the Bible is our authority in all matters of faith practice. Why? Because the Bible is inspired by God. Amen. Amen. We've been learning that at Sunday school. Amen. I read these things to you, I believe, last week by inspiration. Right. And, of course, through that, God has uh, uh, put all that to our minds through the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The Bible bears absolute authority huh? of God himself. Right. If a Bible does not recognize Jesus Christ as virgin born, then it does not uh, right. stand on the principles of God's authority. That's right. right. Amen. And no human opinion or decree of any church, group, or council may usurp the authority of the Bible. Although we have it going on today. Yeah. Right. There's all kinds of churches today that are usurping the authority of God's Word. Oh, yes. Why? Because man is smarter than God. I think so. No creeds, no confessions of faith, which attempt to articulate the theology of Scripture, can carry the authority of Scripture itself. Amen. 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 Period. Right. Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, Catholic Church, doesn't matter who they are. That's right. And the, the Word of God is our only authority, Amen. and then is our guide. And we have Psalm 119, 105. <coughs> you all remember that? The Word Amen. is a lamp under my feet, and a what? Light. Light. So i got to have the right light, don't you? Yes. Amen? And that, that is, can be a lamp under my feet. Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Enter in the straight, great, straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which... Go in there. Right. That's scary. Yes. I don't know how many people are saved. You don't need it. Right. But there are many being led astray. Right. They're going through the wide gate. Yep. Amen. Yep. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth on the way, and few there be that find it. Do you believe yes. the Bible saying that to be the truth? Amen. 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 Okay. I mentioned last week that we are biblicists. Oh, yeah. What in the world is a biblicist? Somebody that believes the Word of God. Amen. Do you believe the Word of God? Amen. You hold in your hands tonight. Uh, it's an amazing thing. It's God's Word written on pages. Sure. I watch my wife read it every night. Praise God. Amen. And uh, she is marking her Bible up with a fury. I, I mean, she's just going to town with that thing. Amen. She'll take she'll take it to uh, uh, therapy when I'm going to therapy. I need therapy all the time. <laughs> But nonetheless, when she goes there with me, uh, people always mention how they like the fact that she's sitting there doing that. Amen? Amen. I, she's not doing it for recognition. No. She's doing it because she believes the Word of God. Amen. And that blesses my heart. She reads it. I don't have to read it. Right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So a biblicism one applies the Bible, right. and I said this before, literally. Right. Except when it's figurative. Right. And you got to know the difference. Sure. And there are people that actually take things out of context and unfortunately come up with a lot of ideas that are just figurative and it has nothing to do with the Word of God. Right. Amen? Yeah. So it has to always be laid in context. Mm -hmm. So if we are um, authentically biblical, then we will be thoroughly Baptist. Amen. You mind if I make that statement? Amen. That's what we are. Amen. Amen. Frank, you're doing a good job. <laughs> And I think I mentioned this last week, the Word of God is supposed to govern our con or control our opinions and behave. Right. right. Imagine that. <laughs> yep. Could you imagine God, through His Word, controlling what I say? Mm -hmm. That's right. Even when I'm in situations where I know I shouldn't say it. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah, amen. When they got me on that uh, steroid stuff, and Miss Anna will say things, I don't know, just, I don't know why it doesn't just your case. <laughs> Amen. And so I have to ask the Lord, help me with this, Lord. Amen. And John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. So if we believe that the word of God is truth, then that's where we're going to find how we are to operate our lives within the confines of the God, of the God that we believe in. Amen. Whether the Bible teaches, uh, I'm sorry, whatever the Bible teaches is to be believed. Yes. Whatever the Bible commands is to be obeyed. Amen. This is not my statement. I can't remember who made this. But whatever the Bible commands uh, is to be accepted. Amen. Amen. And whatever the Bible uh, condemns, I'm sorry, it is to be avoided. Right. I'm not sorry. If the Bible condemns it, we're to what? Avoid it. Avoid it. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, every Christian 
It's good to be able to see it up here. Can you say amen? amen. Make you feel good. Amen. What every Christian should ask, what does the Bible say? Amen. Now this I was talking to my son. I said, How many people in your church of three hundred some people know the Bible? Right. And he said, Not many. Sure. That's dangerous. Yes. I mean now Chad knows the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen. I appreciate that. And uh, that's the problem. Right. We're listening to men yep. and not listening to God. We heard it this morning. We need to uh, learn. Yep. Amen. Listen to what God's here. Amen. And learn. That's what the Bible said out in Jeremiah 10, right. as we studied this morning. So, as a child of God, don't believe me. Right. Go back to the Word of God, the King James Bible. Amen. And what does the Bible say about this subject? Yes. Now, some subjects, I must admit, are more difficult than others. For sure. Uh, like this, uh, we've been dealing with replacement theology for some time. Mm -hmm. It's hard to be able to get a hold of that at, at, when you first sit down and read the Bible. Sure. Second time you sit down and read the Bible. Right. So it might take about three or four or five years. It might even take ten years. Oh, and finally, God will open the floodgates and make you see the truth. Amen? Right. Amen? So that's why it's good to read and study the Word of God. Yes. And it's good not to listen to what every man has to say about a particular subject. Amen. We know that God has given us doctrines that we can believe. Sure. Uh, we believe in the doctrine of eternal security. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's a good thing to believe in. Amen. Amen. Now, if you didn't believe in that, I'd be able to get you to do just about anything. Tell you you're going to lose your salvation. Right. If you didn't live right. Right. But I can't do that. Amen. So, and I've said this before, if you can show me in the Word of God that you're telling me the truth, I will change. Amen. And I, I've been addressed by many young men over the past. I'm not saying all young men are, you know, not able to come up with truth. But they got to come up with the truth on their own. Mm -hmm. Amen. And if a young man is going to sit down and teach me or tell me about uh, his idea or his opinion about what the Word of God says, he better have been in the Word of God for some time. Amen. 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 Matter of fact, why in the world would you want to correct a man of God uh, in any situation unless he was a heretic? Right. Amen. Amen? Right. And if your past is a heretic, get rid of him. Right. Amen? Uh, okay, let's go on and move on to the good stuff. Now, I said uh, here tonight, name, and if you can see the names there, <laughs> uh, name a great Baptist Christian evangelist from 1755 through 1899. Now, I know Charles can do this because he's been teaching us. Yeah. Amen? Amen. <laughs> So uh, give us a name, Brother Charles. Uh, J.S. Swan. Amen. <laughs> Good job, Frank. <laughs> Anybody else want to try? Hey. Who? Charles. Amen. William Penn. William Penn. Amen. So these are... <laughs> these are great evangelists. And what's really shameful about that, and, and I feel that way when Charles is teaching us in Sunday school, be careful, Brother James. We'll be praying for it. Amen. I, I, uh, I'm embarrassed that I can't remember some of the names that Charles mentions all. Sometimes it'll come up and I go, oh yeah, sure. But it, it's, it should be a part of who we are right. to look back and right. say, who are those great men? Yes. And some of it we reflect back on and look at what they've done for the Lord Jesus Christ. Wouldn't it be a great thing? Yes. Uh, many people were getting saved yep. from 1755 until right. 1899. That's an amazing thing, amen? amen. So, so we're going to look at some of these things tonight. Amen. Uh, Baptist Christian theologians. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of them. Amen. And there were heretics. Sure. Amen? But, you know, in the subject of baptism, if you study any of these guys, like John Norcott or Robert Robinson, Abel Morgan, a lot of these guys understood... Uh, about baptism. Sure. Amen. And we need to understand baptism. Mm -hmm. That might be good people to read. I don't say I agree with everything that they say, right. but nonetheless, they have a good handle on what baptism is all about. Right. Amen. And uh, there's some good commentaries. Alexander uh, McLaren, mm -hmm. if you uh, if you get his commentary, yeah. don't use it all. No. Believe yeah. me. <laughs> but some of the wonderful things that he said, these guys are writing from the past. Sure. I mean, they didn't have a computer. Right. Uh, they didn't have a typewriter. Right. They had to write it down by yes. pen. Yep. And they did it by studying the Word of God. Isn't that amazing? And there were some other great Baptist writers like John Bunyan. Amen. Amen. 
and it, that's not the same, but anyway, John Milton and Benjamin Heath, and on it goes. You see, I mean, all those men years ago sat down and wrote about the things of God and, and the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And most of us haven't got time to write anything about God. Right. Wouldn't it be nice if we could write those things down and give them to our children? Amen. I, th I like the idea that um, our children uh, here in this church uh, actually have verses memorized. Amen. Amen. And that's good because maybe they might be able to write great things in the future. Amen. How many people ever heard of Obadiah Holmes? Mm -hmm. Amen. A couple of people, amen? Yes. Well, he was um, lived in Rhode Island. He actually settled there. Y'all remember that? And you know that uh, he was an activist. Huh? I remember hearing. Yeah, I remember hearing. I heard it too. He stood up for the Word of God as a Baptist. Amen. He became a pastor of the Rhode Island Baptist Church, and his position there was for 30 years. I think it's amazing. But did you know that he was whipped almost to death? Yeah. Because he preached the Word of God. Right. I don't know if I could take that. Right. He wasn't just whipped on the back of his shirt. No. They took his shirt off and whipped him with a cat of three tails. And they did it until he couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. And he made a statement. He said, you have struck me as with roses. Wow. Could you imagine that? No. And seven, it took him seven days to heal from that. Wow. But he went back out and preached the word of God again. Amen. And, and I wonder how many of us are brave enough to go ahead and say, I'll do that. I don't think I'd ever get whipped today no. for preaching the Word of God. No. He was also a great Baptist pastor who used, was used of God, and you know what he did? He planted a thousand churches. Mm -hmm. Amen? From 1755 to 1795. We're not seeing much of church planting going on anymore. Right. That is fundamental independent Baptist right. church. We have storefront churches. We have grocery market churches. We have uh, uh, Riverside churches, we have uh, 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 Oceanside churches, and we have uh, uh, some other kind of church name or whatever. Uh, they're being planted, mm -hmm. but that's not the kind of church that God wants us to plant. Amen. Right. Amen. You say, what? Well, because they don't use the Word of God. Right. They use a form of the Word of God. But think about that. How many years is that 1755 through 40 years? 40 years planted a thousand churches. Wow. Amen. I, I had an opportunity to plant one church. Right. Amen. Yeah. And that about killed me. Right. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. Right. Think about that, honey. You, think about it. We planted one church. That was that was uh, an experience and a half. Sure. Amen. Country Bible Baptist Church. And then I, I laid out some other things for you here tonight. Uh, I know that we're against baptizing babies. Sure. But these were great evangelists at the time, as we have a list of them right. uh, uh, written down there. Charles Finney, Gail Moody, you all heard of them, amen? Yes. How many people heard of Sam Jones? Oh, yes. Gypsy Smith. Right. Great evangelist. Yeah. Fantastic. Many people got saved right. in his, in his uh, ministry. Billy Sunday. Yeah. I didn't know that he uh, believed in uh, baby baptism. Yeah. But he did. Sure. So we don't want to hate him. No. Preach the gospel. You know what Billy Sunday did? He closed up bars. Yes. Right. He would go into a local bar, preach the word of God right. on a bar stool, and people get saved, and the next week it was a church. Right. Uh, could you imagine that happening today? Nope. Other great evangelists that maybe we never heard of. And uh, Isaac McCoy, and uh, as we go down through that list, uh, Brother Coleman, and, and then the cyclone Mac McKeldon. And uh, these guys are just great evangelists. They, they went around preaching the Word of God without apology. All, I think I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. All up through the eastern coast where we live, even in the Albany area and Troy side, they used to preach and people get saved. Right. And churches be established. Sure. I remember the movement came to uh, our area and uh, some fundamental Baptists came to the area and started churches back 40, 50 years ago. And a lot of independent fundamental Baptist churches were started, and they grew immensely. Amen. But all those guys are gone now. Yep. Yep. Those churches are gone. Yep. It's shameful. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, what can I do to be a part of that? Start back at the fundamentals. Amen. Amen. Start back where it all started. Right. Uh, pastors that every Baptist should immediately recognize. Of course, I read this, and I said, yeah, okay, he's so right. right. But, but here they are, John Clark. How many people have ever heard of John Clark? Mm -hmm. My point. 
Amen. Amen. Uh, Daniel Marshall and uh, Valentine Whitman and Isaac McCoy. Uh, just think about those names. They don't mean anything to us today. And, and these are not these are not being taught in Baptist colleges. That's right. Uh, they don't want them to know the heritage. Why is right. that? If you can kill the heritage of America, you can kill America. Yeah. Right. That's right. right. If you can kill the heritage of the Baptist, yep. then you're going to kill the Baptist. That's right. And uh, I think somebody said to me, um, well, you know, that's just the way it's going to happen. That's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. You don't not to. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, if you ever get the uh, trail of blood, Amen. I took a picture and... Uh, how do you like it? Isn't it pretty good? Mm -hmm. you Can you all see the writing up there pretty much? Yeah. Okay, that's simply, I'm not going to use the pointer tonight, but that's simply a road map. Right. Amen. From, if you will, from the early years of what? Uh, 100 all the way up until, I think what I read down there? 1900. Right. Okay, now the reason why I want to show you this is that if you look in the red area, you'll begin to see how it all started. Right. Christians. Jesus organized his church in Mark. Right. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it started. You all believe that tonight? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Asia Minor, mm -hmm. in Wales, Italy, England, and all that. It goes on. Right. And so as we go on, then we see later on comes this group called the Anabaptists. Right. Amen? They, they come out of the Christian uh, faith. They come out of being saved and baptized. And they're bringing along with them the same uh, principles that we believe. They're Baptists, sold out. Preaching the Word of God. You see, Anabaptist keeps going on until we come to the 1800s and we call ourselves Baptists. We've eliminated those names. We still call ourselves Christians. Right. Amen. But what's really interesting is you look down here, we're going to go a little bit further in that. You'll see this uh, yellow area. Yeah. You probably can't read everything that's going on. Uh, but you begin to see where the Catholic Church starts to take hold. Right. And the green. Can you all see that? Yes. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. In case anybody ever uh, questions who started the church, it wasn't Peter. Amen. It wasn't the Catholic Church. No. Amen. Right there in the green area, as we look from there, it starts 300. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. And, uh, of course, we know who was responsible for the Catholic Church and who supported the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church was started by a bunch of heathens. Right. Amen. That did not believe the word of God. Right. right. Uh, they were Pharisees, Sadducees, yes. people that wanted to have rule yeah. and control. Uh, they wanted to make you their disciples. Mm -hmm. That's the way it was. Right. And of course, with that, we move on and uh, we see the Baptist Christian. Then along comes the Catholic Church. Right. Roman Catholic Church. Next slide. I wrote that up there. Okay. You see that, everybody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, and we see that green line extending all the way into uh, 800 right. A.D. You see that? What happens? Split. Splits. Yeah. That's the first church split. Right. Not from a Christian, not from a Baptist yeah. church, right. but from the Catholic church. There were people that had a real problem with how the Catholics were doing it. Yes. The Catholics said, you can't read the Word of God. Right. You can't understand the Word of God. Right. We have to interpret it for you. We we just know it. You're never going to know it. So we're going to tell you what it says. Right. And so there were some people who were wise enough to say, hmm, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So off of that broke the Greek Catholics, or Greek Orthodox, amen. Yeah. And then, of course, the Roman Catholics. Right. You see that? <laughs> that's split up. That's not something I made up. That's history, man. Yes. Thank you. That's history. Thank you, Brother Frank. Then move down a little bit on that purple line and come up to where the brown line is. Uh, Sharon, you're not going to like this. Uh, they became Protestants. Yep. And rightfully so. They should have protested what the Catholic yes. Church was doing, right. as we should. Sure. It amazes me that there's a lot of Baptist churches today that will mingle with the Catholic Church. Yep. They'll have a priest come in and stand at the holy desk and have them address the congregation. Hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but I get up and walk out. Amen. I know one time we were in a meeting up in Missouri, and uh, I know the preacher there, good man of God, loves the Lord. He had a, a guy come in with an NIV Bible. Uh, he wanted to embrace him and let him know how much he loved him. And so when he got up at the pulpit, I stood up and exited. Amen. Amen. Was it stage left or something like that? I'll just go on. Amen. You say, why? 
because I didn't want to listen to them. Amen. Amen. I had to drag my wife out screaming. <laughs> well, you say, isn't that kind of mean? No, because uh, for me, the, the way I think, I can't have my mind cluttered up Amen. with all that nonsense Amen. And, and, and really believe the Word of God. Right. right. Amen. So we, we come out, Frank, show that little light there in that first brown line. Anybody know who's, who that is that's breaking away from the Roman Catholic? Lutherans. Martin Luther. And we said, wow, what a great man. Well, praise God for the thesis yeah. he wrote on sure. the church door because he's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, we can support him on that. But I can't support him a lot of other areas. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Then all after that to Presbyterians, the black light. Mm -hmm. Church of England. Amen. And then, of course, you see those other churches broke right. off of the Presbyterian church. Yes. And then we have down there a little bit further before those other ones break off, the Congregationalists, which I didn't, I didn't point out the very bottom line there. Amen. Right. Church of England, you saw that. But the uh, uh, Congregationalists, uh, I don't think there's many of them around anymore. No. Yeah. no? But they were pretty uh, strong about yes. in 18, 1900s. Uh -huh. And you say, well, where are they today? Oh, I'm glad they're not around. Amen. Amen. All right. Of course, I did forget about the Church of England. And uh, with that, the Church of England... The Methodists did not agree with them. Right. Uh, why? Because it was a state-run church. Right. It was a government-run church. Yes. And so the Methodists broke away from that. Right. I don't know why they didn't follow the first green line. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they broke away from the Catholic Church. Right. Next slide. Now this is in the Trail of Blood. If you get a book, it's a small book, and it has a map similar to this that would uh, point you out, or point these areas out. Amen. Now, with Lutheran, or Martin Luther, uh, the Calvinists became a reality. Mm -hmm. And you say, why did the Calvinists become a reality? Uh, because they didn't believe the Word of God. Right. They believed in election. Yeah. Right. Of course, they, and I don't think that I'm smarter than Calvin. Uh, that guy's a great man. He, he wrote a lot of books. Mm -hmm. But he believes that uh, God has elected some. Right. And cursed others. Could you imagine a God like that where uh, you weren't having a chance to be saved? I mean, you're born and you're going to hell. That's it. That's pretty rough saying babies go to hell. It would say that, that God is not capable of saving anybody. Uh, but anyway, that's what they believe. The Calvinists, Lutherans, uh, Anglicans, or if you will, the Episcopalians. You ever, that's, a, that's quite a name. Amen? Are you with me on that? Yeah. Presbyterians. Anyway, they right. all bought into Calvinism. Yes. And I'm going to share a little bit with you about that, uh, if you will. So let's move on to the next slide. Catholics, Protestants, believe in theonomy and theocracy. Uh -huh. And uh, you say, what in the world is that stuff? I'll explain in a moment. But I want you to understand now, I'm not making this up. You need to study it for yourself. That's right. This is where covenant theology came from. Right. Although we believe in the covenants. Yes. And I'll have time to explain it. Amen? And replacement theology came from that. Right. Amen? Yes. And post-millennial came from that. Yep. Meaning that uh, after the seven-year reign or the seven-year tribulation, the Lord is going to take His church out, which is contrary to Scripture. Amen. Okay, but, but look, look what I'm saying here. Uh, there is more than just a difference in how we baptize and take the Lord's Supper. Amen. Meaning that there is a lot of junk out there today that has come through, if you will, uh, what I just mentioned, theonomy. What does that mean? It simply means that it's a hypothetical Christian form of government. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, if you will, ruled by a divine law. Right. And of course, we have a divine law. Amen. Amen. And these people uh, include, if you will, judicial law of the Old Testament, uh, such as observed by uh, many of the people in the old times. But we want to be careful of that. Amen. We believe in the Old Testament. Right. Are you with me? And uh, if we believe the Old Testament and we react on the Old Testament, then uh, we ought to be able to stone our kids when they disobey us. Amen. <laughs> says that in the Old Testament. Amen. Right. They, they were supposed to take the kids out by the gate yep. and stone them to death. Could you imagine that, kids, if you disobeyed mom and dad? Take them over to the pastor and they'll take them out in the backyard and stone them to death. Just a son. Huh? Just a son. Just a son, right. Amen. Not the girls. Right. Girls are going to but, but there's nothing in the Old Testament to support they ever did that. Right. Theocracy is a government of state by a divine guide, 
by officials who are regarded as divinely guided. And the Catholic Church has picked up on that in, in a way that um, uh, it's kind of scary. You know, they have uh, the Pope. Right. right. They have the bishops. Sure. They have who else? Cardinals. All of you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hell down centers. What's that? Hell down centers. Hell down centers. They don't believe the word of God. That's right. Now bear with me a little bit more. Let's move on. Three theologians that you don't want to forget. And I got the pictures up there for you. One has got Charles Beard. Do <laughs> <laughs> you think Charles can grow a beard like that? Probably. Yeah, probably. Now, how many people like Augustine? Well, that's good. Some of it. Some of it. Amen. But uh, he was a he was a bad character. Right. Saint Augustine. Mm -hmm. uh, all the corrupt manuscripts that we have. Yeah. And all that we see is contrary to the word of God. Wow. And he supports it. Yep. Amen. Amen. Uh, he supported Constantine, but nonetheless we have Calvin yeah. in the fifteen hundreds. Right. Calvin came along with his uh, divine uh, leading of saying uh, God is uh, God of election, right. and it's that simple. God will choose who he wants to be saved or does not want to be saved. Right. Amen? Yeah. And then later on we have Rush Dooney. How many people have heard of him? Rush Dooney. Another one of those guys that bought into it. They're the guys that bought into the uh, uh, theistic evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, they, do you know that? Uh -huh. Yeah, they bought into all that nonsense, right. tying it in with, uh, with the Bible. Right. Uh, some people seem to think that evolution, God created it, but he created it through man evolving uh, through the first uh, how many other years before uh, Genesis came about. <laughs> Genesis 1, 1 and 2. You ever heard that before? Oh, yeah. 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 What's that called? Gap yeah. theory. Gap theory, right. And uh, that's called theistic evolution. It's amazing what man can tie sure. to the name of God through the word of God, isn't it? And I don't know if we're going to be able to get through all these uh, disturbing facts. Uh, this is good preaching stuff. Baptist Christians don't know their own heritage. Right. <clears throat> How do I know that? Well, I, I every once in a while I watch, uh, I used to like to watch Waters. You ever know who Waters is? Well, he's, I think he's out of the Fox News group. And what I like about it, he would go to colleges. Young people that are getting educated right. to lead our country. Yeah. And he would ask them questions about the government. They have no idea. Right. They have no idea who was our president, our first president, right. let alone our last president. Well, I think everybody knows who he is, but nonetheless. They could ask them about government, how the judicial uh, system works. They have no idea. Right. They're not being taught. Right. And that's what's happening to Christians today. Yeah. You say, well, Pastor, um, I, no one's ever told me about these things. Well, I'm trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Something that we can look back on. Now, it might be a little strenuous and boring, but nonetheless, uh, the disturbing fact here is that Christians just don't know their heritage. Right. Amen. Now, why do we have so many different churches today? Because Christians don't know their heritage. Right. I've had some Baptist preachers tell me we got to take Baptists off the sign because it offends people. <laughs> I know we say, oh, well, but the fact of the matter is it does offend people. Right. And so I want to build a church, and I don't want to offend people by building sure. a church. That sounds sure. contrary, doesn't it? All right. Uh, and, of course, the second thought here is a disturbing fact. Baptists are starting to embrace someone else's theology. Yes. In the last 10 years yeah. as a pastor, I've never seen anything like it. Right. I'm talking about fundamental, yes. independent Baptist preachers. Yep. yep. They're buying into theology that I've never heard before. Well, I've heard of it, but... I, I don't see it being as stressed as it is today. Right. Isn't it crazy? And we have all these fashions and groups growing up because why? Somebody is saying it yep. and not supporting it with the Word of God. That's right. Somebody else's theology. Yes. Don't believe what I said. Right. Yeah, just study it for yourself. Amen. And why would I tell you? It's kind of like me warning you that the bridge is out. Right. Uh, please stop. Don't go any further. Sure. You know, it, it'll be an amazing thing to see people going over the bridge when you're trying to warn them. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you something that I want you to believe. I want you to believe the Word of God. Amen? And right. I'm not trying to be a wise guy here. I just want us to know that we need to understand our theology. Yes. Right. 
and where it comes from. Amen? Amen. A another fact. Amen? Our Baptist educational system has been, I can say now, totally reconstructed. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I wouldn't go to any one Bible college today. No. Uh, several that I called up here recently. Right. It blows my mind. Yeah. Right. Uh, they're making those young men and women so educated in regards to the Word of God that they know all the Greek sure. and they know all the Hebrew. Yeah. They don't know anything about the Bible. Right. Amen. Wouldn't it be great to go to Bible college and learn about the Bible? Amen. Amen. So what I, what I found out, I'm not necessarily sure of this, but I found it uh, uh, 30, 40 years ago when we were going to a Bible college to check it out. Uh, the professors are the ones that came in and started teaching uh, what they thought to be the truth. Sure. And they were not told not to. Right. To finally, one Bible college up in New York uh, stopped using the King James Bible because some other theologians said, we don't need to use that anymore. Right. Yep. So, not just that educational system, even our Christian schools. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. It's discouraging. Sure. Right. We call them Christian school, but we can teach them anything we want to. Yep. Take the name Christian out. Exactly. You know, I know people would like to have Christian booths. Oh, amen. <laughs> Christian cigarettes. Good work. Christian music. <laughs> I'd like to see Christ sit here and experience his name being used that way. Right. right. Amen. Christ does not want his name to be used in that fashion. He Amen. Would that's, he would not support it. Right. And so what am I saying to you tonight? Well, Baptists next have fortified their place of spiritual leadership in America. Absolutely. Amen. Now I'm talking about the Baptists that no longer know their heritage. And it is disturbing. Yep. It ought to be done. We ought to be up in arms about it. Right. Amen. Uh, yelling and screaming and saying, I don't want to hear that. Right. When you turn the radio on and you say, well, I like the way Bobby Zachariah, or Robbie Zachariah preaches. Uh, He's pretty brilliant, you know. Yeah, right. But he doesn't preach the Bible. Right. That's right. Let's say the whole Bible. Right. That's right. Now, I, I'm, I'm getting some people mad, so I'll leave it alone. Sure. Amen. Yeah. What about the fellow that got caught having a relationship with a uh, with a prostitute? You remember his name? Swagger. Swagger. People followed him like oh, yeah. he was a god. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. Uh, there's another fellow, sort of a heavy set guy, uh, teaches Revel out of the book of Revelation. Really good teacher. Mm -hmm. Amen. But he doesn't believe the Bible. Right. Y'all know his name? Hey. Jack from Empty. Yeah, it could be one. Hey. Who is it? John Hey. Hey, yeah, I couldn't remember his name. John Hey, right? Yeah, anybody ever watch John Hey? I'm not trying to pick on these guys. They're, they're leaving their yes. Baptist heritage and drawing people in by their knowledge. Right. And knowledge, what does it do? Puff it up. Right. Amen. I said this, Baptists have been severed from their roots. Yep. Kind of scary, isn't that? Yeah. Psalm reminds me of Psalm 1. Right. Where it be like trees planted by the rivers of water, amen? Amen. Right. Our roots are supposed to be in the water. Amen. Uh, the real stuff. You say, well, how do I know that you're giving us real stuff? Check it out. Amen. Amen. It's all there for you. It's not something I made up. Amen. So we'll close with uh, Revelation 12. And 11. The accusers of our brethren is cast down. The accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. That's the last part of Revelation 12 10. Who's the accuser? Satan. Satan. He's in the business of accusing us. Sure. Amen. You notice he doesn't accuse every Baptist church. All right. He accuses those that stand on the word of God. Amen. And then uh, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Amen. And they loved not their lives unto death. Wow. That's a tough one to close with, but that's a fact, isn't it? Yes. Amen. Amen. We ought to love the Lord more than we love our lives. Amen. And here I'm speaking, saying that tonight. All right. I don't want to die. Sure. I don't want to be beaten with a whip. 
with my jacket off and my shirt off. I don't want any of those things to happen. I wonder if I could withstand that. Uh, we need to preach the gospel mm -hmm. and get back to preaching. Sure. And, and not just the preacher, but all of us. Let people know the truth. Amen? Right. And, and fall back on our heritage, where we came from. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's stand and close the prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We pray that you be with Brother James as he travels home. Amen. Or Lord, back to his base. And Lord, we, uh, we pray that we hear good news tonight. Now, Lord, be with his family. Lord, as I know it's difficult for them not to be with him. And Lord, I pray that um, these simple facts tonight, that Lord, we allow them to, uh, uh, to just get into our hearts, into our minds, and to study them, Lord. And make sure that, Lord, we understand those men and women that have died for us that we can be free and be able to <coughs> preach and teach the Word of God. Lord, let us preach and teach without apology. Uh, Lord, let us be careful with them that seem to have all knowledge and ability. And Lord, let us focus on you, Lord, tonight. If there be one here that's not saved, Lord Jesus, I pray tonight that they would come to know Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as their Savior. Amen. And Father, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Number 313. 313.
take a few more minutes of your time tonight, if you could. So let's be seated. This is very important. Uh, I know that uh, sometimes we let you know about business meetings 